Hello everybody, it's Max with Crypto Talk now. On today's quant coverage, we're going to outline a few key factors. Number one, you're going to see some brief coverage from a particular panel discussion in which Gilbert Verdian outlines how quant basically solves some things that you saw, for instance, with the likes of Ripple's XRP, but in this particular case for blockchains. We're talking not just tens of thousands of dollars but millions of dollars per year for various different blockchains. Without further ado, let's go ahead and kick things into today's quant coverage. And of course, we're gonna go ahead and get into some of these other uh, great things and what is happening with the likes of quant. So give me just a moment to pull this up. And as you can see right here, here's a, the uh, particular panel that I'm referring to. I'm of course, gonna blow this up a little bit more for you if you can see it in full screen. There we go. And it's only about a minute and 41 seconds. And of course, we'll come right back after that for some commentary. So I think uh, blockchain needs a lot of evolution. It's currently still in its immature state. And if you look at technology as it, as it matures, the first and second generations fail. So it's usually the third and the fourth generations of technology that stays. And that's in everything, in, in you know, industry, automotive, cars, internet, whatever. It's just the trend. So I think there's a lot of blockchains that are going to fail. And, and you know, if we have 30 today and there's another 300 next year, um, it's the evolution of those are the ones that are going to stay. So my, my view is humans are quite creative. We're, we're quite innovative and we will solve energy problems. I mean, Bitcoin takes, you know, one day of processing of equal to all of Iceland's electricity for the day. But as, as Arthur said in his talk, we, we can start looking at the stack and, and making it as optimal, as efficient as possible. So the evolution of these are going to use less energy, which, which is a good thing. So, so our, our approach within, within, uh, within quants is we, we kind of are not fast. We don't, we're agnostic. So whatever blockchain underneath you use, it's, it's up to the, the customer. It's their choice. But what we actually allow them to do is understand and broker the most efficient cost for them to run blockchain. So if it's costing them 10,000 euro a day on Ethereum and they want to reduce that to 5,000, they can move you know, the next day into Hyperledger and reduce the cost and then kind of migrate as, as the cost of gas increases. So we allow you to have the choice to manage your cost based on your energy use and your com compute use as well. Okay, thank you very much. and. Uh all right, so there you go in regards to that. Um, I'm, of course, going to come back right here in the frame here in just a moment. But, you know, one of the key things I, I definitely wanted to outline was, for instance, you know, you hear about Ripple's XRP. And, of course, I'm a big fan of that, by the way. But, again, with Ripple's XRP, you know, they also do the whole thing with cross-border payments and what they're going to be especially solving with ISO 222 coming up here soon, especially in March, right? But of course, you know, Quant's part of the whole mix with what they bring to ISO uh, 222, that particular standard and whatnot. But when you hear the likes of Gilbert Verdian basically outline just that, you know, what they're bringing to the table with the interoperability for uh, blockchains and so on, being able to basically tell these other blockchains, hey, look, um, it's not about what you guys have to do to chains to fit our contortium and so on. It's how we are able to uh, basically fulfill your needs. And if anything, like what he mentioned, save you guys, um, you know, instead of go, you know, spending $10,000 per day uh, with some of the issues you have with your particular blockchain, um, being able to slash that literally in half, like he mentioned, down to $5,000 per day. Do the math on that. It comes up to be a little over one, uh, about 1 1.8 million roughly per year some big savings to say the least so a little bit more in regards to our quant coverage for you i'm gonna of course go ahead and bring this back up so if anything how about this again from quant papa but um it basically states this you know the world wide web on blockchain um one of the key things you're going to see right here of course um in this two minute clip um is it, just that you know basically um you know, it says enterprise adoption at scale and developer growth, uh, the MAPP making, uh, you know, it gives a little brief description from Gilbert, of course, uh, how some of this is solved. 
But my key takeaway when I when you guys uh, hear this, I should say, is just this. You know, you got one of the things asked, of course, is what's it going to be? What's in it? I should say, excuse me, for the developer coming over and coming into Quant. What what's basically in it for them? My key thing is what's in it for them is, for instance, being able to recognize that Quant is quote unquote like a monopoly, if you will. Um, there's true value in this particular operating system. So let's take a moment to hear this. It's only about two minutes and eight seconds, and of course we'll kick it right back. I'll give me just a moment to full screen this, and then, like I mentioned, we will be back here shortly. And here we go. So, so we're, we're, we're allowing, as, as we said, enterprise uh, to adopt blockchain technology at scale, and, and that's quite key. But we're also giving our developers and the community the same opportunity. And, and so they can create the next generation multi-chain application that will take on the world. And, and we want them to do it. You know, we want developers <clears throat> excuse me, to come up with new applications that are that are cross sector that that are you know for consumers for enterprise for business wh whatever it is mm. and they can publish that and and they can actually create these you know the next whatsapp the next telegram the next right. facebook whatever they what, do. yeah and Gil, why would they do that mate why would they do that are they incentivized to do that because fundamentally you know we hear the narrative of open source open protocols you're a little different you are propri proprietary you are for profit so how does the dev benefit by utilizing your system. Yeah, so we give them technology that you can't have anywhere. Um, really having access to all the different blockchains gives you a new market because if, if you develop a DAP on Ethereum, only Ethereum users can use it. And, and so you're, you're limiting yourself to particular networks. And, and so what we're doing is we're kind of democratizing that, allowing any application to work across any network across the internet. Pretty much. So this is the this is the the, the beauty of multi chain applications. Mm. You can serve them to the whole internet community, and you've got billions of users, you know, straight away. And so what we're doing is giving developers the features and the technology to create a new generation of application that takes all the features uh, of different blockchains, combines them, and allows you to to do something that was just never possible. Sure. And so we we've, we've demonstrated quite a few things of what's possible, and and we we really like that because. It helps inspire people, and and so we've created, you know, the decentralized Amazon. We've created the, the decentralized search. Um, we've put the World Wide Web on blockchain. You know, we've done all these things yeah. that are pre pretty much impossible a couple of years ago, but through yes. the technology that we've built, it, it's it, it's there. All right, so there you go. You know, one of the key things I definitely wanted to you know outline here um, in regards to all that is, is basically just that. You know. It's it's like, for instance, you know, when you think about some of the statements that he basically mentioned, you know, Gilbert Verdian, um, you know, for for instance, this whole concept of the World Wide Web on blockchain, um, yeah, for instance, uh, Quant basically is you know a for profit, um, you know, operating system, if you will, right, with overledger and whatnot, and and rightfully so, but. My key takeaway from this is just that, like what we mentioned multiple times here on the show, as well as on these recorded videos, and that is, it's basically the Microsoft of crypto or the Microsoft of blockchain, if you will. You're not investing in a necessarily just a token, right? Because um, some people want to flood it saying, you know, oh, Quant is ERC20 token. You're basically investing into the, uh, in, into an operating system software. On top of that, right? He mentions the whole thing about, you know, like a dev coming over and so on. When I make the statement of, you know, the Microsoft or crypto, or in this case, you know, blockchain and whatnot, um, my, or, you know, I should restate that an actual operating system period for the likes of blockchain. Um, but think about this when you do think of Microsoft, right? If you ever install the Windows operating system and so on, you have to have unless you're doing something pirated right you are basically installing um or you should have a license key right so if anything this is really part of quant's contract for instance some of these licenses and there's that real true value behind uh behind all that again like i mentioned before i feel as though personally quant is basically 
um, the a monopoly, right? So when you hear him, as in Gilbert, mention these particular things uh, to this particular gentleman on the right, um, you know, it, it's just that recognizing that um, they basically are a monopoly. And, and when you compare it to the likes of um, Microsoft and so on, I mean, again, Microsoft, was it 90% of all the personal computers in the world are on a Microsoft operating system? Um, Microsoft Windows, for instance, whether you're a fan of that or not. The other 10% is basically Apple. By creating a for-profit operating system uh, for blockchain, if you will, um, it creates a, a different form of value. Yeah, it's for profit, um, but the whole point is, it's just that, that is a monopoly in itself, and if anything, the value behind that is tremendous um, at, at a, such a high scale beyond anything that we could possibly Im uh, imagine, or if, if, if anything, to really properly measure, because we haven't seen it fully implemented yet, uh, but I think, if anything, we get that mass adoption, like I mentioned, with ISO 222. Um, a little bit more in regards to uh, this particular quant coverage of the day. Um, again, there's this that I want to bring to your attention. And, of course, this is in relation to uh, what you see here with, for instance, um, quant and the global trade. So, for instance, this states right here, the fragmented uh, networks and siloed assets actually give me just a moment. I'm going to bring it more more fuller screen uh, I do apologize for that. So for instance as you can see right here You know guys it is just that you know uh, understanding how this fragmentation works so Some of the key bullet points la uh, labeled here apologize states promise of open networks one network to rule them all think about how that is going to happen but enterprise needs controllability, privacy with decentralized trust, practical trend, minimum viable ecosystems, right? On top of that, the result from it will be a proliferation of diverse but disconnected networks. And then you can see how this is all connected through just that, the global trade. Here before we mentioned, for instance, like what you see right here with the trade logistics. I think Quant basically solves... Um, by using real world use case through their utility of the uh, quants overledger to solve some of this. If you think about what happened, for instance, within the last few years with the pandemic and the continued breakdown of our current logistical problem through supply chain by being able to have the likes of quant to interconnect and make things interoperable, even from a logistics standpoint, that sector alone is massive. We're always talking about like what's going to happen with ISO 222 and the financial sectors and, and so on. And, and that gets us to huge market cap for the overall crypto market cap that people just don't realize, right? But when you think about, again, these particular sectors, like on yesterday's particular video, the multi-trillion dollar sector is literally uh, 10 different ones, actually about 13 when I count the last. This is how we get to crypto having massive amounts of market cap. People simply do not realize it. And if anything, one of the key takeaways should be to not give in to so much of this fear um, and this panic that's recently been happening, of course, with the overall market cap or uh, the crash, I should say, that's been happening lately, especially with the likes of FTX and so on. Um, a little bit more in regards to all this. We go a little bit further to the right. Look at this particular breakdown. So it says, consider a bank participant involved in multiple consortiums. Multinational Bank M is part of WeTrade, Marco Polo, if you happen to be uh, familiar with that, and even JP Morgan's Interbank Information Network, IIN. These are implemented on different DLTs, HLF, R3's Corda that we talked about here before, and even JP Morgan's quorum, respectively. Bank M will require multiple nodes supporting infrastructure and operational capabilities. Think about that and the scale that that will bring. Over time, Bank M should avoid a proliferation of nodes to build, maintain, and interoperate between. Hence, quant and the interoperability of what that will bring to the table and connect all of this. So, 
two key takeaways that you see right here is Overledger's architecture. Overledger provides a network gateway compatible with enterprise DLT networks, avoiding complex node interactions as shown right here. On top of that, version and multiple instance incompatibilities uh, require a standardized gateway and, of course, the API. We talked about multiple times about what Quant is connected to, and especially when it comes to those payment APIs, PayPal, Amazon Pay, Google Pay, Apple, so on and so forth. And, of course, what you see on the bottom here, Bank M, and, for instance, the Hyperledger Fabric, Corda, right? Connecting to the likes of Trade Finance with Marco Polo. The supply chain that we talked about, especially with logistics and the, the problems it solves with that, with trade lens, um, so on and for, so forth. The FS network with Corda. All right, a little bit more. Um, you see Quant at the very top of this all and how it is all just that, interoperable. And everything is connected to everything. It starts with Quant and that solving real world solutions at massive scale even in the middle we of course talk about ripples xrp quite often right and the payment solutions re in regards to that you even see cbdc's right there whether you're for that or not i get it but on top of that recognizing how it's not replacing swift if anything it's upgrading swift with these particular technologies having everything talk to each other simply makes sense Last but not least, what you see right here with the IETF 11.4 SATP resource descriptions. Now, for some of you guys, you may think, well, I don't understand this. This doesn't make sense to me because I am not a tech person. If anything, if you ever have accidentally pressed, for instance, a certain button, one of the F keys on your keyboard when you're on a site that you just connected to, it will open up an area on the top right of your screen and it'll give you a breakdown of some of the gateways of how the internet is connected, right? You go to, for, uh, for instance, a certain URL, and you're not even thinking about how it's all connected. Want, in the future, you will see how it is all connected because it makes just that, a gateway to all this. Again, think about what they're solving with the messaging systems, and especially when it comes to the likes of ISO 222. All right, before we wrap up today's quant coverage, I definitely want to point out a few other key things as I come back into the frame. And that, of course, is what we're going to see right here on the overall crypto market. So as you can see, you know, this market has been really, really crazy, mainly because, of course, what happened recently uh, with the likes of, for instance, um, Binance and, of course, FTX and, you know, the, just the big crash that's basically happened. I mean, this thing, if I'm not mistaken, went all the way down to 804, 805. Uh, billion uh, on the overall crypto market cap. Remember yesterday seeing this thing tanked about roughly 19, 20% decrease over the day, right? Massive. Heck, Bitcoin, that touched roughly 15,000. Ethereum down to like 1,100 something in that area. But in the likes of quant and so on, um, something I definitely want to bring to your attention. So when I type in quant on the search and you look more into it, I mean, you know, some people say, why would you want to buy quant? Um, for instance, like just right before our eyes, it just jumped right back up. But, you know, some people say, I would never buy quant because it's tanking along with the rest of the market. My attitude is a quant tank down to $50. Um, you know, I would be like, you know what? That's almost three, if not four on the, my original amount that I was going to put in. So if it was going to tank, I am not into quant. For the swing trades, not at all. I'm into quant for uh, the long term hold because I realize that it will eventually bypass the likes of Bitcoin. It is literally Bitcoin with utility. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's video, you guys. Thanks so much for watching today's coverage on quant. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't done so already. They all have a blessed day, and we'll see you on the next one.